Mm. Mm. God, old Dorney, you're going to get that pardoned. No, where the hell are you off beating that path through the night? Now, Lee, are you not tonight nice my night out with Lucy and Mary? Oh, my God, the hens are off the bingo again tonight. Now, don't go starting on me. There's only three nights a week, and it's the only little bit of pleasure I get. Well, dear, if I had a nickel now for every bingo game you're after losing, boy, I could afford to buy the, the, the Queen Mary. Now, I'm taking a package of gum and a pack of cigarettes. How the hell am I supposed to turn a profit here in this place? Where's Ronto? He doesn't go off the theater at 10.30. You know that. And get down off that cooler now, look. You're going to have this place destroyed on me. Chess, Chess, darling, be a good boy and get down off the cooler. Look, or I'll call your mother. Oh, Mom's not home. And I'm left here now to hold this place against a pack of savages. What joy is there in this for me? What hidden pleasure am I supposed to be deriving out of all this, I'd like to know? Ask Nan to give you a hand. Look, she loves to do it. I do. Is there a red cream soda, on Miss Hines? No, there's not. Nan, yes, ask Nan. That's going to help me to bankruptcy. I'm going to sell this place yet. I'm going to sell it. Oh, bias. Why, dear, you'd be some surprised if you came home from your bingo game one night down it was gone, wouldn't you? Oh, don't be so foolish, Leah. Put these on Mom's book, uh, Mr. Hyde. Well, I'm going to have to put them on Mom's book now, ain't I? You got them half eaten. Now, no more credit for you crowd here tonight. You listen? No more. Now, that's it. It's over. How much are you bought? Nine cents each. We're not that much down to Downies. Well, go down to Downies and buy them and stop tormenting me. I'm sure Joe Downey wouldn't let you make a zoo out of his place. Um, Give me three export, eh, no? No. I only got the Rotman's open here. I, I hate Rotman's, boy. Yeah, well, you shouldn't be smoking anyway. You're gonna rot your lungs out. Does your mother know you smoke? Here's the bullseyes, Leo. Oh, great. Ah, bullseyes, good. Now, how much are you gonna charge for them now? I want 10 cents worth. Here you go. I'll put them in the tear. What? Oh, look, put that in a paper bag. That's not sanitary. Look, I, I watched the white one. Save the white one. take what you right? get now. How much are you gonna charge for them, if I may ask? Here. Two for five. Two for five. Well, look at the size of that batch. Well, it should be five cents each. Oh, no, no, no. She said, she said two for five. That's a ripoff. All right, all right, all right. Three for a dime. Great. All right. All right. Sold. Hey, you're making them too big. I keep telling you. You're going to have this place given away.
<laughs> well, thank you very, very much indeed. Thank you very, very much, and a great big hello to all the crowd out there. I know we're having a terrific time here tonight at the Grand Hall, and we got a dandy, dandy crowd out there tonight. I wish you could all be here. Of course, you can't all be here. I don't expect you all to be here, of course, because if you were all here, of course, there'd be no one for Q Radio to broadcast to, and that's exactly what we're doing here tonight, uh, broadcasting live from the Grand Hall. Uh, with the wonderful grand band behind me, of course, and a lot of other special guests in the show tonight, uh, like the Swami Pumphrey is uh, going to be here to read your fortunes, and, uh, of course, Peter Francis Quinlan out a little later on, one of his tunes. And all of the proceeds uh, for tonight's show are going to the bird bath, and a very, very worthwhile cause is the bird bath. I know I was down inspecting Kittibity Lake and Rennie's River and whatnot, and the water is definitely not clean. Very, very dirty, in fact, and, uh, a lot of dirty birds around town, and uh, very hard for all the local birds, the swallows, well, perhaps not the swallows, uh, but the uh, sparrows, and very definitely the gulls, very hard to keep clean. Now, with the bird bath, they'll all be able to get right in there and have a good scrub up. And, of course, we all know how very, very important it is to have clean birds, because cleaner birds means cleaner air and all that kind of nonsense. And I'd like to... Hello? Hmm? Well, thank you very much, dear Sandy. Uh, a little note from Sandy here. Mm-hmm. 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 Mm -hmm. Well, a little correction on that item. Apparently, that should read burn bath, not bird bath. That's burn bath, not a bird bath at all. Oh, but a very worthwhile cause, nevertheless. So keep those dollars coming on in for the burn bath. Now, uh, I want to remind uh, the, the few ladies who called in very concerned about the birds... Uh, there's going to be a very special bird wash in the parking lot of Holy Hearty Mary High School Saturday morning. Get on up there if you need. You want your hello? Oh, oh, thank you very much, dear Jamie. Uh, a little note from Jamie here. Mm-hmm. 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 Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, a little correction on that item. Apparently, that should read car wash, not bird wash. That's car wash, not a bird wash at all. Uh, we'll have it straightened out for you a little later on in the program. Uh, now, of course, all the lines are open. Now is your big, big chance to call in. If you haven't done so already, all the lines are clear. And uh, while we're waiting for the callers, I suppose uh, we should bring on our special, special guest for today, uh, Swami Pumphrey. He's going to read your fortunes. He's going to kind of pick up on the, the cosmic vibrations, so to speak, as they come in on the radio waves. <laughs> and he'll kind of encapsulate that, kind of condense it into a few simple catchphrases. Uh, so right now, I think we got a few callers on the line. Let's call on Swami Pumphrey and give him a big warm hand, Swami Pumphrey. Very, very nice to meet Thank you very much, Sandra. Hello, my lovelies. How are you tonight? Well, Swami Pumphrey is here now. He's here to open up the vast cosmic storehouse that contains your present, past, and future. <laughs> Reveal, if you will, your secrets for happiness and fulfillment in this all too shallow world. And baby, you know what I'm talking about. Don't you, Jack? You know. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> well, now, uh, I feel the effects of last night clearing. I feel the cosmic vibrations coming to me. So we're going to take the first caller now. Hello, my lovely. Hello, Swami Pumphrey. Yes, my dear. Yes, now, my foot is real bad. I can't put it down on the step at all. Oh, no, you can. And in the in the morning, it's worse. Now, is that going to go on or what? No, my dear, it's not. <laughs> now, that was just a short snapper, dear. A short snapper to get things on the go. But as we go on, the forces will become more in-depth as the vibrations thicken. And there's nothing sexual about it. Now, now, now we're going to take another caller now. I think we're ready for another caller. Hello, my lovely. Hello, Sonny Pumphrey. Yes, my dear. Yeah. Is Baz here with you now? Yes, he is. Would you like to talk to him, my lovely? No, I don't talk to Baz. I want to talk to you. But I had to ask that, you know, because I like Spaz, but I didn't want to feel bad because I was talking to you. I liked you both a lot. I liked you both, you know. And honest to God, my son, if I was 10 years younger, I wouldn't look at either of you. <laughs> well, my dear, I see, I see there is a man in your life. My husband just left me. That should read was. What? There was a man in your life, he's just left you. I know that. I told you that. Well, then you don't need your fortune told, do you? You don't need Swami Pumphrey. No, I want to know if he's coming back. Well, it beats me, my dear. That's right, you do. How'd you know that? I've got to do some job on me, too. 
But you know, honest to God, I get straight lonely, you know. I think I'd sooner take the beatings and have the company. <laughs> well, I see, I see footsteps in the snow. He's come back, sir? Well, I don't think anyone's come back till you shovel your walk, my dear. <laughs> I like that one, Jack. <laughs> huh? What do you mean? He's come back. Do I look for him in the snow? But when the snow falls first, look for him. It's like a red lizard. What? Tell me now. All I'm, I just want to know is he coming back. That's all I want to know. Tell me. Honest to God, I'm going crazy here. I'm going out of my mind. <laughs> yes, you are going out of your mind, my dear. What? I see it in closed room. I see men in white. I see a straight jacket hanging in the corner. And they're calling a name. What's your name there? Judy. That's the name they're calling. Judy, Judy, Judy. <laughs> Slummy pump break, sees all, knows all. Now, I'd like to remind you all here tonight now that I am merely the voice, the instrument, if you will, of a greater cosmic pumpery. But, baby, I know you all know that anyway. And now, now I feel there's going to be another vibration. Oh, yes, another vibration on the line here. Here we go again. Hello. Slammy Pumpy. Hello, my dear. How are you? I am calling you from the St. Clair's Hospital. Yes, yes. I see sickness. I see sickness. You are a very sick woman, my lovely. Well, I hope I'm not too sick. They're releasing me tomorrow. Yes, yes. I can see that. I can see you are getting better. I yes. see an overnight recovery. Yes. The doctors will call it a miracle. Yes, yes. Well, uh, the tests uh, were, were the results. Well, not too good. I have to go back here next week to have more testing. Yeah. I also see, I see a sudden relapse yes. and a quick death. Goodbye, my dear. <laughs> Swami Pumphrey sees all, knows all. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Swami Pumphrey. Very, very nice. Very, very impressive, dear. Very impressive indeed, uh, Swami Pumphrey. And, of course, uh, I want to remind all the callers out there that the Swami Pumphrey's predictions are strictly confidential between you, the Swami, and the bib post kind of thing. <laughs> and, of course, we wouldn't dream of laughing about them with anyone outside these four walls. Uh, now, time for a little more music in the show here right now. Uh, we're going to call on a great uh, Newfoundland star. Uh, he's twinkling uh, back there in the wings, falling off the wings almost. Let's get him out here real quick. A uh, big hand now for Peter Francis, uh, Francis Peter, uh, Peter Dancing uh, Quinlan. Peter Francis Quinlan, take it away, dear uh, Francis. Thanks a million, Baz, to help with the confusion. I was sent off to be baptized as Peter Francis Quinlan. I think alcohol was involved. I came back as Francis Peter Quinlan. Those women sure were hard. Not one was left on scared. On the night the ladies dirty had the fight. Well, have you heard the story about Bullseye Betty's fight? At the ladies' dirty tournament at Lucky's Place that night. Now Bullseye's team and Debbie's were both on double four. When Bullseye's dirt hit off the wire and stuck into the floor. Now Double's Debbie thought it funny and started in to laugh. Ha ha, but Bullseye's sister Susan went to full fence to that. Yes, and she threw a dart at Debbie, but it hit Big Bertha more. And pretty soon both the teams were fighting on the floor. Cause on the night the ladies dirty had the fight Well it was such an awful sight Both the women sure were hard Not one was left unscared On the night the ladies dirty had the fight Bullseye Betty threw a punch at double Debbie Brown The punch missed double Debbie Oh but it knocked her sister down now the manager was horrified at such a bloody sight. So he had to call the Mounties to stop the ladies' dirty fight. Well, the boys in red come rushing in to fling the ladies out. But Doubles Debbie led that counter charge that left it in some doubt. Cause beers and cheers were flying while brave men stood back in fright. The wildest thing this town has seen is the ladies' dirty fight. Cause on the night the ladies' dirty had to fight. It was such an awful sight But the women sure were hurt Not one was left unscared On the night the ladies dirty had the fight When court next day the magistrate confiscated all the darts And he fined the ladies for 50 bucks for all their separate parts He gave them a stern lecture And he warned them separately That the league will be abolished unless the Mounties referee so don't come down to our town for a tournament this year 
because they're not allowed to throw not one dirt that the RCMP is there. And they've taken all the darts away, yes, and scoreboards are locked up tight. They keep them in the jail right here so the ladies will not fight. Ready, boys? On the night the ladies dirty had to fight. This is a true story. It was such an awful sight. Those women sure were heard. Not one was left unscared. On the night the ladies dirty had to fight. Those women sure were heard. Not one was left unscared. On the night the lady dirty had the fight. Very much indeed. And before we go on with the show here tonight, I want to remind all the folks at home out there about Marie's Mini Mart and all the delicious mini baked goods over to Marie's Mini Mart and, of course, Minnie herself. <laughs> but it should be Marie. Uh, it used to be uh, Minnie's Mart, but of course, Marie rested control of the Mart in a very controversial court battle. And now it is Marie's Mini Mart, but every bit has Minnie and every bit has Marty as there was. <laughs> and right now, of course, time for a little bit more music. And we're going to call on a wonderful grand band once again here, this time a little up tempo tune from Jamie called uh, Oh, Patty, When You Die. Take it away, dear Jamie. <laughs> Across the river from Ontario In the valley of the Gatineau Lived a man and his loving wife I made their acquaintance in the last years of his life Sharp as a tack, as old as I was young Dancing in the kitchen These were the words he saw Fine as I lend me your fiddle and I'll pay every day. You can fight in Shiny Oak. Visit for a day and I'd stay for a week. With the dogs and the horses and the trout in the creek. Evenings he'd teach me a new tune to play. Sometimes his eyes got misty and he'd quietly say, That was a tune that I learned from my brother Jack. Before he went away to the war and never came back. Oh, and when you die, will you lend me your fiddle? Oh, if you don't, you can go to the devil. Oh, he's so kind that they'll lend me your fiddle and I'll play it every day. Keep it bright and shiny, oh. talk to you about your future. Oh, yeah? <laughs> Madam, we wanted to get together with you, you know, and talk about all the arrangements. We don't want you worrying about nothing. Oh, all right. It'll be real fun. All right. We'll get together with you tomorrow. Okay. I have to run now, yeah. and Leo will kill me. Oh, we got the show here time. <laughs> and if I'm not home 20 minutes after it's over, you got the cops out hunting for me. <laughs> <laughs> right. well, see you then. See you later. Bye-bye now. Right. Okay. Bye. 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 Bye.
Yes. Well, I can't believe your luck. Bad. Good news. Oh, yeah, no, I can hardly believe it myself, you know. My God, everything's happening so fast. Mr. Bunch, it's like I'm in a dream or something. And when did Mr. Brad pop the question? Last week. Oh, my dear, you're such a charmer. Well, I know it's only a matter of time before someone picked up your option. Oh, thanks. Everyone's being right kind. I can't get over it. <laughs> oh, you deserve it all, my dear. And of course, it goes without saying that I will handle all the arrangements for the wedding personally. Oh, I don't know, Mr. Boncho. Oh, I insist. And it's going to be right here in the Grand Hall. Now, what do you think of that, my dear? The theater. Oh, Mr. Boncho, I can't afford this place. Oh, nonsense, nonsense. Treats on me. My dear, nothing is too good for our Miss Wadden. Oh, I don't know. I was picturing kind of a smaller ceremony, you know? Oh, I won't hear it, boy. This is going to be the social event of the season. Why, it'll eclipse the royal wedding. Now, we can't let our public down, can we? No, I, I suppose not. That's the spirit. But, but you know, Mr. Butcher, no one's going to want to see me. My God, it's just like I'm royalty or nothing, you know. I'm only the secretary. Ah, they'll snap it up, Phyllis, my dear. Oh, really? I got the poster for the wedding. Yes, Dick, just uh, put it over there and leave immediately. Oh, oh, all right, Dick. What's on that? That's next week's poster, is it? Uh, of course, of course, but it doesn't hold a candle. It is not a candle. Now, if you'll just sign this, I'll get the tickets, uh, the invitations printed up. Oh, I don't know, Mr. Budgel. I never signs nothing. Oh, it's just for your own protection, Phyllis. Just a uh, legal bruja, you know, union regulations, use the theater, that kind of Jim jaw. Ah, won't mean a thing to you. Oh, I'm getting right excited. <laughs> oh, thanks, Dick. Well, I want me ma'am to come. And her sister, because this is the only relatives that get lift in town. No problem. I'll arrange a couple of camps. Oh, uh, what? Well? Uh, slip it in mind. Uh, I'm thinking in theatrical terms, of course. Uh, I'll take care of it all. Oh, you're being so kind to me, Mr. Bundle. You know, doing all this for me. Uh, I'm getting right overcome. <laughs> uh, dear, dear, my dear. Uh, it's the least I can do for someone who's become like a daughter to me. Now, uh... You go on into the ladies' room and pull yourself together. I'll get cracking on the invites. You're some skeet uncle, you wee boy. You got Phyllis into a spin. Nonsense, Dick. Boy, we're going to make a bundle on this. Here, let me see that poster. Here. Yeah. Ah, fine, 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 yeah. boy. And the beauty of this is we don't have to pay the cast one red cent. No? No, boy, they get married, they're happy. Yeah. The audience gets the show, they're happy. Yeah. And we clicks on the door. Yeah. Boy, everyone's a winner as far as I see it. But what about the reception, Uncle Louie? Huh? Oh, the... Yes, uh, snag. You gotta have cheesies and beer, boy. With the pavement out of the box office. Certainly not, Dick. We'll, uh, we could, uh... Hmm, just, uh, write on the poster. Bring your own cards and baskets. <laughs> Cash bar. That's your cover us. There. Wow. Spin out. You're the cheapest, Uncle Louie. Thanks very much, Dick. Stick around. You might learn something. Uh, uh, now, you get cracking on that poster, and I'll get cracking on fitness. All right? All right. Very good. Come, come, come.